This is a 28 years old male presented with a traumatic cataract complicated with a pupillary block. Intraocular pressure is 40 plus millimeter mercury despite of maximum anti-glaucoma medication. The patient has renal failure and was on dialysis, so intravenous mannitol before the surgery was not a valid option here. Since IOP was extremely high in this case, I prefer to stain the capsule under dispersive OBD. Staining under air won't be the right choice as the air bubble won't stay inside the anterior chamber because of the back pressure, I believe. So I started the surgery by doing a single small paracin. This is just enough to pass the OBD cannula, then dispersive viscoat OBD injection don't have any financial interest. As you can see, staining is done by swiping movement of the shaft of the cannula on the anterior capsule while slowly injection of the trepan blue on the anterior capsule. More OVD inside the anterior chamber is necessary to flatten the anterior capsule as much as possible just prior to rexis formation. And now you can recognize how high the back pressure marked by the egress of the OVD from the anterior chamber. In this particular case, I prefer to initiate rexis by puncture of the anterior capsule with a 27 gauge needle bevel down and immediate aspiration of the liquefied cortex as much as I can to ease the tension inside the capsular bag. Now you can notice how the pressure inside the capsular bag is reduced by aspiration of the liquefied cortex. You can see we have here a radial tear, which I believe would have extended to the far periphery if I didn't aspirate this liquefied cortex. Injection of more dispersive OVD trying to counter effect the back pressure by pupillary block now, the next step in the rexis is to hold the capsule close to the peripheral edge of the radial tear, which was reasonably in the mid-periphery thanks to the aspiration of the cortex. I always take care in these cases to start a relatively small rexis and enlarge it gradually in a spiral fashion till I reach a reasonable size. You can see I'm doing a very small motion rexus. And now the size I think is reasonably for phaco emulsification. Never hesitate to re-inject OVD every time it is needed and try to keep the anterior chamber as deep as possible to have a reasonable control of the direction of the tear during rexus formation. More OVD injection to keep the anterior surface of the lens capsule flat. And take your time in these cases. You may need to use a generous amount of OVDs during the step of rexis formation. Try to keep the free flap of the lens capsule in the middle of the anterior chamber as it helps to control the direction of the capsular tear. Take your time. There is no need to hurry in these cases. Slowly enlarge the rexes until you reach the size you are satisfied to work with. Now, here we go. The cataract was pretty soft and could be aspirated easily using vacuum with no ultrasound. And now this is followed by irrigation aspiration of the cortical remnants. Now injection of OVD inside the capsular bag. In these cases where I suspect complications, I always assign a three-piece lens for implantation. This eye oil can be implanted in the, inside the bag if the surgery went uneventful or can be implanted safely in the sulcus in cases of open posterior capsule. Again, this IOL, the three-piece IOL, can be sutured to the iris or even fix it to the sclera if necessary. So this is my one-size-fits-all choice in such high-risk cases. 
In this case, because there was no significant zonular weakness, so I implanted the lens directly inside the capsular bag. Otherwise, I would implant it in the sulcus with optic capture in cases of mild zonular rupture or weakness. Now here is the main incision was too short, so I'd like to make one stitch of 10O nylon. This stitch won't harm at all. And now finally, irrigation aspiration and stromal hydration of the wounds before conclusion of the surgery. Thank you for your attention.